Hi, welcome. My name is Danny Howe, CEO of East Coast Tax and Financial Planning. And this week is all about fixed index annuities. We dedicated this whole month on the show that I host, the Financial Pulse radio show, to annuities. And last week we talked about variable annuities, which of course are uh, insurance contracts wrapped around an underlying portfolio of mutual funds or exchange traded funds. And the performance of that annuity, the cash value of that annuity, is going to be based upon the underlying investments of that portfolio. Money is invested directly in the stock market, so you can actually lose money or make money. And so it gives you opportunity for growth and so forth. We talked about a lot of the bells and whistles you can get, like income riders, death benefit enhancements, things of that nature. And if you missed the show last week, go ahead, go to our website, eastcoasttaxandfinancial.com, click on Financial Pulse. You can listen to the radio show. You can watch a video I did on variable annuities and other important information if you're just trying to decide whether or not that's right for you. This week, we're talking about fixed index annuities, which is the second highest selling or, or invested, if you want to call it, uh, annuity in the marketplace. You know, out of the $230 billion of annuity sales last year, $130 billion of it was in variable annuities, and the other remaining $100 billion uh, was uh, between the last three classes of fixed index annuities, multi-year guaranteed annuities, and single premium immediate annuities. Today, we're going to talk about the fixed index annuity. And the fixed index annuity has really got, uh, garnered a lot of traction because of the fact there's so many retirees and people getting ready to retire. And so people are looking for safer alternative investments than just putting their money in the stock market. The fixed index annuity can almost be looked at as an answer to the variable annuity where you can actually uh, have your money safe. You can't lose money due to market fluctuations. You get to keep your gains, uh, but there's no risk of loss. However, on the upside, there is a, uh, a, a, a stunted growth or opportunity cost factor that you have to take in consideration when you're evaluating whether a fixed index annuity is right for you. Remember, I always say these insurance companies and the investment companies, they know how to make money. They know how to design these products for them to make money. So it's left up to you and your advisors to make a smart choice and decision on which one works best for you. And these companies come in and out of favor. They come into the marketplace with really attractive products only to later maybe dumb them down. So got to be careful of who you're getting your advice from, what's their motivation, are you uh, looking at multiple products, illustrations, historical performances, and are you evaluating the carrier? How have they treated their policyholders in the past? Is their renewal rate history uh, a positive one and one that could be uh, relied upon? Those are some of the factors, but what that I wanted to get to today was to show you exactly how a fixed index annuity works, and the most common um, index option that's out there, and this is where it all started, was the S&P 500, what they call an annual point to point. And there's only two things that matter in a fixed index annuity. It's day one and day 365 of your contract anniversary. So here's how it works. We look at day one, and then we look at one year from now, it's called day 365 of your contract. And we're going to do this based off of the S&P 500. Okay? So we're going to look at this point and this point. And let's say for this example that we start off and the S&P 500 is 2,000 points on day one. And let's say at the end of the year it's 2,200 points. So the difference between there is a nice healthy gain of 10% in our example. So if you would have had your money directly invested in the stock market in the S&P 500, you would earn 10% based off of these two numbers. Now in a fixed index annuity, it doesn't matter what happens in here. It does not matter what happens throughout the year. The only thing that matters are two numbers. This number, this number, on this day, and on this day. Those are the two numbers that matter in an annual point-to-point, -point, whether we're talking about the S&P 500 or the Dow Industrial Average. A lot of times you can get indices overseas like uh, the Nikkei or the Hang Seng or the Eurostox 50. And there's a lot of companies that come out with proprietary indices as well that link multi-assets such as commodities, futures, and, and options and different things like that to try to give you more opportunity for growth. But in this example, I wanted to show you just a raw of it of how an index point-to-point -point works. This is your contract anniversary. It's not a calendar year type of situation. It's what's the fiscal year of your contract. 
and an anniversary date of your contract. And every year, you get to choose whether you want a fixed rate option. Typically, right now, they're hovering around 1% to 1.5%. You have the option to maybe do a monthly cap and all these different things. But for today's example, I wanted to show you the power of what they call the S&P Lock-In and Reset. So we're going to use the S&P 500 as our index for this illustration. We're going to start off with a $100,000 investment and we're going to invest that money directly into the S&P 500. And let's say for example the S&P 500 for the first year does 10% growth. Simple math tells us we're going to have $110,000 in that account with 10% growth. And let's do the same thing for the next year, another 10%. With compound interest, we're going to have roughly $121,000 if we grow by another 10%. And that's if we're directly invested in the market. But the fixed index annuity is a little different, remember? Because you're protected on a downside where you have no downside risk but you're limited on the upside where you have caps and spreads and different fees to, uh, to limit your upside potential. So S&P 500 annual point-to-point -point caps are anywhere from as low as 1.5% that I've seen lately up to as high as maybe 4, even stretching it to 5. So we're going to use 3% in this illustration. So because we're capped at our growth, even though the S&P did 10%, we're only going to get three. So we have 103,000 instead of 110,000. The next year, the exact same thing will happen. Instead of 121,000, we're only going to have 106,000. Now, in the financial crisis, what happened? Over a two-year time period, we saw literally a 50 to 60% decline in the broader market. So we're going to use 50% to keep math simple for this illustration. So we're basically going to lose a half of that 121000 So to keep math simple, we're just going to call $60,000 as our balance. Uh, as a result of being directly invested in the stock market. But with the fixed index annuity, it's a different conversation. It's basically a good news and bad news type of conversation. It looks like this. The bad news is you got a 0%. You didn't make any money during that time period because they're protecting you on the downside, um, on the downside risk. The good news conversation is the fact that you haven't lost any money. You still have your $106,000. Now, the argument's always made, and it's valid, is that while the market always rebounds, it always comes back up. And in fact, after the 2008 crisis, that following 24 months after the bottom, we saw the market rally and rebound uh, more than ever has since the Great Depression by 60%. That was 60% of whatever you had left over, and this illustration is $60,000. So you would only have $96,000. You still haven't got back to even. With the fixed index annuity, it works different. It's called a lock in and reset. So as soon as that market goes back up again, you start to participate in upside potential. That means you'd be at about $109,000 in change with compound interest. This difference here is why so many conservative investors, retirees, people that are looking to retire, that want to make sure they, they don't outlive their money, are attracted to fixed index annuities because they can be an alternative to, to the market. You know, let's face it, putting your money in CDs or money markets or treasuries is like putting your money in a poultry skin and out in your backyard. They're not paying squat for interest. So this could be a way to get uh, moderate returns, low to moderate returns in a safe environment without any risk. But let's face it, 3% is still low.
So you got to make sure that you're doing your due diligence. What companies are you considering? Um, how many of them are you considering? You should be considering several. Looking at historical illustrations, making sure that the advisor you're working for is independent and sifting through much more than just one product and one company. You got to remember how people are compensated and most annuities are compensated on a commission basis. And you only have to have an insurance license to sell fixed index annuities. So you can literally take a 40 hour class and go out and sell millions of dollars worth of investments after you pass a test for a license. Nothing wrong with that, it's not illegal, but you have to understand the source of advice that you get. You know, here in our blogs and on the radio station all the time, we're talking about knowing the source of your advice and who's giving you financial guidance. And it's so important for you to really sift through all the noise to find out exactly what's best for you. You know, annuity companies have come up with different indices. You can get overseas indices like the Hang Seng, the Eurostox 50, uh, the Nikkei, uh, you name it. And then they also have proprietary indices that you can choose from as well to make it more opportunistic for you to have potential growth. So you have to look out, weigh all your options. And that's what this is all about, educating you on how these things work so you can make smart financial choices. And of course, we're always here if you need our help.